Hello and welcome to the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention of Business Bureau virtual training episode seven featuring golf. Sorry for the background noise. Thank you to all our advisors for joining us today. We appreciate your time. If this is your first time to join us, please note that this is being recorded as have all of our previous virtual training as well and they can be found at sunny.org backslash travel dash trade because you'll check those out my name is tracy bond and i am the senior vp of global leisure sales for visit lauderdale and i am joined today by my colleagues your co-host for today caitlin etchers and gabriel martinez we do have a special guest today. We only had to look internally to find him, Mike Sophia. He too is with Visit Lauderdale and he is our VP of Sports Development. You're going to be hearing from him shortly. So before we get going here, let's move on to our next slide. Early on, Visit Lauderdale realized that this pandemic, that people's big concern was health and safety. So this past summer, we developed and produced a video called Shaping the Recovery Curve. And you can find this at the sunny.org travel dash trade, as I mentioned earlier. It's a great video that will show you and your clients exactly what they can expect when they're traveling to Greater Fort Lauderdale. Um, it takes you through the airport, the port, the hotels, attractions, and restaurants. And truly, it will show you what to expect. It is our number one concern, too, for our travelers and, of course, our employees and our residents. So please take time. It is 37 minutes long, and it's part of our Travel Agent Academy and part of the requirement for taking the academy. Please check that out. And this is kind of a perfect segue, speaking of health and safety, to take us in. Oh, I do want to mention, too, that we have the Safe and Clean Pledge. Sorry, sorry about that. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, Visit Lauderdale created the Safe and Clean Pledge for our partners and hospitality partners around the whole Broward County area to take this pledge. And they pledge to follow the CDC guidelines that includes, of course, wearing masks, having sanitizer, social distancing, and also um, the payment method. So we hope that you'll check that out as well on our sunny dot. So safe and clean certainly is important, and I think this is a great segue in today's uh, session on golf. Um, I think a lot of you know that golf has seen a bit of resurgence because of the pandemic. We see it as an opportunity to get out the great outdoors and keep that social distancing. I know it certainly works for me because I'm usually in the woods or on the rough, so you'll be far away from me if you're a good golfer. Um, but that is why we wanted to bring in Mike Sophia today because I think he can probably tell a better story about golf in, in Broward County. But before I do hand it over to um, Caitlin and, and Gabe and Mike, I do just want to give a shout out to our partners that have joined us today. We have Casey from the Jack Around Golf Club. You see her there. Uh, Elizabeth from the Renaissance at Compton or Plantation Hotel. And Marissa from the Residence Inn Pompano. And Brian from the Compton Beach Golf Resort, and, or course, excuse me. And Lydia from Compton Beach Tourism. So thank you very much for your support. We'll be hearing from them shortly. And now I'm going to turn it over to, I believe, Gabe to give us a little bit of housekeeping notes. Uh, thank you, Tracy. And um, uh, folks, before we get uh, into the meat of the presentation today of the program, um, we, 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 uh, if you've seen some of these before, you know that we've laid them out in a way um, so that you can see and meet our partners. We don't want you to focus on the PowerPoint presentation, although there is one. We want you to see uh, what your partners, what our partners are showing you. We want you to get to know them. So um, I want you to play around a little bit. Right now, your screen is probably divided and you have that little gray line that divides the, the cameras from the PowerPoint presentation. In the middle of that gray line, I want you to click and drag it up and down and you'll see how the cameras um, uh, grow. 
Um, so um, make that as big as you can, as big as you'd like, so that you can focus on what our partners are showing you. Uh, but then secondly, up at the top, you'll have different ways uh, in which uh, the cameras displays. There's a little icon um, that says everyone probably right now. I would I, I want you to play around with that and select who's talking and select everyone. That also um, sometimes helps us refresh the screen. So if something gets stuck, try doing that. But again, select from everyone, go to who, um, uh, who's talking or who's speaking and and make that big because our partners, um, you know, we're still we still have our, our fingers crossed because weather is getting better, but our, we want you to see what our partners have to show you. Next, I want I want to let you know that on the control panel on the right, uh, there's a little um, section called handouts. Those handouts are only available today for those of you who are connecting live. This uh, webinar, of course, will be recorded and you'll be able to watch it afterwards. But the the handouts that our partners have put up there for you are only available right now. Uh, then the next thing before I turn it over to Caitlin is I want you to know. Uh, that we're, we have two polls for you because we we trust you. We know that you have your finger on the pulse. You are the one dealing with clients face to face. So we want to know what you're thinking, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, what you're sensing, what's going on out there. And so I'm going to uh, launch the first poll. They are all uh, anonymous, so don't worry about that. We will know we won't know how you voted. Um, and uh, take your time. It'll be up for about 45 minutes and then our partners can uh, mute your cameras and then we'll call you back up. So here's the first poll. And uh, Caitlin, you let me know if, uh, if it's on screen. Yes, it is. All right. So we'll run it for a few more minutes. Uh, seconds, pardon me. Seconds. <laughs> yes, yes. Time flies. It's coming in, collecting responses. So these uh, these questions are, are sort of fluid. One week we'll, we'll hear one thing and the next week we'll hear something else. So that's what we're always asking. What are you hearing from your clients? Awesome. I think All you're right. good. Okay. Can you share those, Gabe? Uh, I wonder I why it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't put up on the screen. But if it, can you see them on the, the results on the screen? I just put them there for you. Okay, there you go. All right. So awesome. We want to see how open the destination is, and we are open. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Awesome. This is great to know. And let me hide this here and we'll go back to the next screen if you can. Awesome. So thank you very much. Um, partners, um, if you are on camera, you can go off right now. I'm just going to give a quick little overview of where our what our, is on the agenda today. We are going to be all across the county here in Greater Fort Lauderdale, but specifically in Plantation and in Pompano Beach, uh, where we have some beautiful golf courses today that we're going to highlight. But as you can see in this picture here on the screen, um, we do have golf courses across the county. Um, this one in particular is over in Hollywood Beach. Uh, so although we are focusing on Plantation and in Pompano Beach today, please know that we have golf courses throughout the county and of course, um, all throughout um, throughout Broward County. Uh, and then we're gonna go on to the next screen today because what we like to focus on to start off this webinar uh, each week that we do this is a little bit of good news, right? We wanna keep these webinars optimistic and share any good news that we have. And as you all know, um, most likely you've heard that last week the CDC did announce that we will be, they will not be extending their cruise ban. Um, and Port Everglades is working very, uh, very hard with our local cruise lines um, to ensure that the framework for conditional sailing um, is set up and is uh, secure and safe. It's a really important milestone for the destination and for all of our businesses as we move ahead and, and get this resumption of service. So we're really excited about the future there and what that is going to um, to bring us. Uh, and then the next thing that we want to share is uh, that last week we had our 61st annual Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. This did happen last year, uh, last week, and it brought in 
um, all kinds of business into the destination. We actually uh, boasted our highest overall occupancy uh, that we have had in the destination since March. So this was a great milestone for the destination. And um, if you didn't hear about it or if you didn't see anything um, about it in the news, um, we did post a uh, link to our private Facebook group. So if you are a uh, Greater Fort Lauderdale Sunny Specialist, which we'll talk about at the end of the presentation. Um, but if you are one and you have access to our private Facebook group, we posted the 45 minute piece that was uh, featured on NBC News uh, on Sunday, I believe. Um, and it really is a great highlight of um, what this boat show means to the destination, what it looked like and, and how it was um, last weekend here in the destination. So this was an exciting time and we certainly encourage you to check that out. And then um, we're going to um, talk about golf, as I mentioned, um, but just a couple quick things um, about the destination. By now, you really should know that we are known to be the Venice of the America and, and Greater Fort Lauderdale. This is our official nickname. And um, visitors and golfers come all over the from all over the world to play in our outdoor playground, really. Um, whether it's going out on a yacht or going fishing and golfing, of course. Um, but the water culture really does drive a lot of visitors into the destination and in, in our diversity, of course. Um, but we want to talk away, we want to talk about why why these golfers and these visitors are going to come into the destination besides um, the golfing they're also going to be able to go out on our waterways and go out fishing perhaps and explore these amazing restaurants that we're going to talk about uh, today so definitely keep that in mind that it's not just the golfing when coming into the destination it's all of these other diverse um, diverse activities that they can do and at this time I do want to bring on Mike Sophia he is our vice president uh, of sports development in the destination. And Mike, oh, there he is. Hi, Mike. Hey, Mike is good. How are I'm you like, today? Here's somebody, you know what it is, is it, it's, these people do oh. this shit every day. Right? Oh, oh. oh we got somebody people. talking here. Let's yeah. see. Somebody is hijacking it. Okay, what do we got? I don't know what to do. There we go. Mike, that wasn't you, was it? I hope not. <laughs> All right, how are you, Mike? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, sorry, for this is Gabe. For the folks listening in, uh, Mike is uh, Vice President of Sports Development and a ventriloquist by, uh, by Hubble, <laughs> so there you go. Thanks, well, thanks. Mike. I, kn I know you had some visions of out there golfing today, right? Yeah, my entire plan was gonna be to use this as an excuse to be out at a golf course at two in the afternoon. But as it turns out, I'm smart enough to come in out of the rain. Who knew? Um, thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm my, my kind of breaking news part of this is that 2020 has been a strange year. Um, I think we've pivoted and, and new normal so much that I don't know which way is up or down. And I think as we, as we uh, move out of the pandemic, we're going to start to see things shift back to the way they were, but there's a, there's a few trends that are interesting and there's a few things, uh, that, uh, we definitely want to keep our eyes on. And, and as we talk about outdoor sports, that was kind of the natural thing that flowed out of the lockdowns in April is how do I get out of the house? What can I do? Where can I go that I don't have to wear? Game? I, yeah, he froze a little bit. that's something that we're going to see that continues beyond the pandemic. As I, I, I looked at a story yesterday, it was about uh, TV ratings in pro sports and some of the mainstream sports. And, and those have been down over the last few months. And it's been interesting to kind of understand why. And there's about 20 reasons in this survey that we looked at, um, all of them that you might imagine, you know, cutting the cord, so much competition with so many sports on, on at the same time all of these things, but the number one thing was I found a new activity. I found something else that captures my attention. So I think that's kind of what we're gonna see as we move forward with some of these outdoor sports. Now to shift to golf, uh, golf had some interesting positive trends going for it. I think 10 years ago is when Tiger fell off the stage and it's been an interesting uh, 10 years for the sport. You've seen some decline in play. 
You've seen some courses that haven't made it. Uh, we've seen some courses go away. So it's just been an interesting time in the sport of golf. But even coming into 2020, uh, there were some interesting signs. There were some interesting trends. And the pandemic has really boosted it. So it's given the game of golf a interesting renaissance. And a couple of the numbers, and some of our golf partners may share more, but you know, I think a third of the golf rounds played are by millennials. So the sport's getting younger. And it's something that that you know we've been looking for at a long time is, is to see more a different audience come into the game of golf. Similarly, I think coming into the year, about 25% of the rounds were played by women, and that was an encouraging sign. And I think now it's up to like 40%. And so all of these are things that we look for as trends that we might want to follow as a destination um, and how that'll impact everything that we do. That, that we do. Uh, you know, I think over the over the last bunch of years, we've looked at, at golf and, you know, because it's it hasn't been growing because our destination doesn't necessarily have a a signature golf resort like so many of our competitors uh, in the state do. Uh, it's just been an interesting kind of dynamic on how to market and promote the sport of golf. But these trends are changing. And if I take out my my tourism marketing hat and put on my consumer hat, I actually organize a annual golf tournament with my friends, about 16 or 20 of us. We pick a destination and we go play four days of golf somewhere. And for us, it's not about a golf resort. We want to be in an interesting destination. We want to be able to get into, get into that destination easily. So it's got to have a great airport. We look for a good hotel, some, a hotel that will really understand kind of our group, maybe be able to help us fac facilitate transportation help us identify golf courses, have great breakfast, great bar. Those are the types of things we look for. And then, of course, we've got to have a great golf course. Um, you know, the one thing that I can't do is pick a terrible golf course because I won't hear about it for years. I'll always, I, my friends will not let me, will not let it die for years if I pick a bad golf course. So getting great advice from a destination on good courses, good value, uh, is super important. So I think the rest of the, the webinar today that we've paired golf courses and hotels is, is fantastic. And of course, the other part that we do is we really look at nightlife. We look at restaurants. We want to be able to go into a place and have a good time and feel part of the destination. So I'm thrilled to see boat campers on this as well. So I think this is a great conversation. I think, I think again, this is one of the trends that we're going to be following uh, for some time. And, and, understanding how golf can become a bigger part of, of our destination. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate your insight. Awesome. So now we are going to uh, go visit our friends up in uh, Plantation. We have Elizabeth and Chris over at the Renaissance Plantation Hotel. Hi there, how are you? Hi, Chris. All right, we wanna make sure you are unmuted. All right, thank you, Caitlin. I appreciate that. My pleasure. All right, well, and Mike, we appreciate the warm welcome and the uh, the data as well. And unfortunately, I don't fall into the statistical category of millennials, but I did golf last week, so I'll uh, I'll reference my experience with that in a moment. But first, I want to welcome everyone to the Renaissance Plantation. Uh, I'm the general manager here, Chris Rieger, and uh, we appreciate your time today. So I'm going to reference two things uh, relatively quickly before I turn it over to Elizabeth. But uh, the first thing is I wanted to talk about is the service and culture here at the hotel. Um, you know, our, our Expedia TripAdvisor scores are four stars or higher. Our service scores within the Renaissance brand run top 25% out of all Renaissance in the world. And I truly believe that our team is, is, has the genuine care and has a, um, a commitment to the level of service that brings our guests back, that people truly feel like this is a home away from home. Um, on top of that, part of our mission statement is a clean, safe, well-maintained, and sanitary hotel. And that last piece, sanitary, is more important now than ever. And, um, you know, we want our guests to feel safe while feeling at home. So it's very important to us, and I feel that we do an excellent job executing. I know Elizabeth's going to talk about some of the specifics in our programs here. Um, the second piece I wanted to talk about was uh, I, had a, I was fortunate enough to get out and golf last week. And I came by the hotel, had to do a few things in the morning 
drove right across the street, right across the street to Jacaranda and was able to play on their newly renovated golf course, which I'm sure Casey's going to talk about. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, got a round in, came back to the hotel, again, drove right across the street, did a few things. Uh, while we have a full bar uh, open with uh, dinner service, I did walk over to uh, Boat Campers just to walk away and was able to enjoy some some good food, good service, plenty of sports on, and, and had a good time. So um, it, it's really our proximity here and our location here in beautiful West Brown. We're, we're pretty fortunate to be partnered up with some of our teams here, and I know they're going to talk about that. Host, hopefully Casey doesn't talk about my golf game, but um, they have plenty to talk about as well. So with further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our Director of Sales and Marketing, Elizabeth Burnett. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Let me get my mask off here so we can be a little more personalized. So as Chris said, thank you so much for uh, joining today and welcome to the Renaissance Plantation. Uh, my intention is not to have a PowerPoint uh, full of slides today, but to make it a little fun and interesting. I have some goodies in store for you. Um, so one thing that I would like to share is we have two promotions. Um, our first one is uh, you'll, you have the handout today, um, but my email address is on there. So what we would love for you to do is email me your top three favorite features of the hotel and how you feel like we'd be a good fit for your, uh, your golf travelers by the end of the week. So close the business this Friday. Let me know what those top three features are. And in return, we will do a random drawing for all participants to uh, email me a two night stay in our suite. I'm getting ready to show you what that looks like, um, as well as $70 in food and beverage credits to the hotel here, and then also a round of golf for two. So that's our first uh, promotion that we have today. The other one is a little bit um, uh, longer um, kickback for you, if you will. So what we are doing is uh, we are giving $3 back to anyone um, that you send our way. So $3 per room night. So email me any confirmation numbers you have, uh, people who stay, and quarterly, we will give you back $3 per room night that um, anyone who actualized with us during that quarter. So um, pay attention. Uh, I hope we make this a fun presentation for you today and uh, make it easy for you to, um, you know, have some knowledgeable info to provide to your travelers. So I'm going to take you around our suite a little bit, um, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the hotel. So this is a, let me get out a picture here. This is a thousand square foot suite. Uh, we have one of these on every floor. So they come with a small kitchenette area, great bar top there. And then take you over here, plenty of dining space, plenty of space to hang out. So if it's a group of golfers, uh, we do have rooms that connect on each side of the suite as well. Uh, so you can have a king room on one side and a double room on the other. They all come with balconies. This is a beautiful view of our lake out here. Um, on the balcony and then our living room here. And then it's closed off by a separate bedroom. And then last but not least, our fun bathrooms here. Renaissance is known for being kind of cheeky. So um, on all the doors, we have these fun pictures. You'll notice it's a lady's uh, bathing suit with a picture of the beach in the middle. Very fitting for Fort Lauderdale. And I'll take you back out here. Um, so, you know, I could give you kind of my sales pitch all day, but that's not really my style. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit of a story about how I discovered plantation. So I moved here about six years ago from uh, the Midwest. And my friends and family and previous coworkers joke that they're never getting me back. Um, I knew nothing about plantation. But what I do love um, and have discovered that has kept me here all this time is how centrally located we are. So Plantation is this great little uh, pocket of Fort Lauderdale because we're 10 minutes from the, uh, the airport, 10 minutes from Sawgrass Mills Mall. We're right across the street from uh, Jack Land Golf Course and uh, 10 or 15 minutes, minutes to the beach. So, um, you know, we're centrally located to anywhere that you want to get to. Uh, we also recently went through a $14 million renovation. Oh, 
Did we lose you, Elizabeth? We're having some bad weather today. All righty. Well, you can see their renovation here, uh, their beautiful lobby and suites that Elizabeth was just showing us. It's really a true gem. I've been there myself. This is Caitlin speaking here. I'm not turning my camera back on because it looks like we lost Elizabeth. Um, but yes, I've been there myself. I bought a fam trip there. Um, and their lobby is just stunning. It's something that is pretty unexpected when you walk in uh, to their resort, you know. Uh, but I certainly recommend that you all send your visitors and your golfers over to the Renaissance Fort Lauderdale Plantation Resort. Um, so I'm going to call up our next guest. We have uh, the Jacaranda Golf Club, uh, which is, as you can see from Elizabeth's uh, balcony there, just right next door. So we've got our golf pros and our director of membership there. Hi, hi everyone, how are you? Let's test out the audio, make sure we can hear you. Can you say hello to us here? And we can't hear you today. We're having all kinds of technical difficulties, but. No, that, that was user error. There we go. Ah. <laughs> How are you today? Thanks for joining Good. us. Good, doing Love great. It. Thanks for having us. Awesome, I'm gonna turn my camera off and the show is yours. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Michael. I'm the director of golf here at Jack Randa Golf Club. Casey Andrews, she is our CFO, director of membership, and Mike Reed, who's our food and beverage manager. Uh, again, thanks for joining us today. Just wanna go over a few things uh, describing Jacaranda and what makes this a perfect de destination for golf. Um, starting out with uh, this past summer, we did a $2.5 million, million dollar renovation project on both golf courses. Um, we have 36 holes here, as you can see. Um, it is a beautiful site. Uh, we were able to secure brand new greens and bunkers, along with uh, a few new key boxes out there. and Again, as you noticed, uh, the beautiful landscape that we have. Um, so we're super excited uh, move, moving into the future with that. Um, probably uh, the coolest part about Jacaranda is we are actually the number one tournament destination in South Florida. We host close to 120 events um, every single year. Um, we have uh, plenty of meeting and seminar space here for any company or group that wants to come down to South Florida um, is space available. And then afterwards, uh, we have two beautiful golf courses with uh, over 65 rental sets uh, available to all participants. So uh, again, it's a, it's a perfect uh, um, recipe for uh, an, an amazing day for those who are traveling to South Florida. Um, the, the other thing we, we truly um, pride ourselves on customer service and course conditions. Um, every year we reinvest and try to make our, our experience for our customers that much better. And uh, those are the two things we, we pride ourselves on and, and really uh, try to stay focused on to make sure their experience is amazing. Um, also, we have uh, after golf or before, if you want to grab something to eat, we have two beautiful restaurants. Uh, Mike Reed, our food and beverage manager, will uh, tell you more about it. We are fortunate to have a great setting here, and in that setting, we have two beautiful restaurants, as Andrew said. Uh, something quick and light, or fast at the turn, uh, at our 19 pole lounge, or join us afterwards and have a relaxing drink and a uh, great menu to choose from. Uh, overlooks our beautiful driving range and has great indoor and outdoor settings. If you like to be uh, outside and enjoy this beautiful setting, it's the perfect place to be. Up in our main clubhouse, we also have our grill restaurant. The grill has a little bit more upscale, sophisticated look to it, but still very friendly and welcoming to everyone. And we have a completely different menu up there to offer you your choice. Um, and if you're coming in uh, with a group, as Andrew mentioned, for tournaments, we're known as one of the premier tournament destinations in South Florida. And we have a tremendous amount of space for all sorts of banquets, uh, auctions, raffles, whatever you might need. You'll see one of our rooms behind us here that we often host our tournaments in. And we can provide a wide variety of cuisines for pretty much the, everything from the basic hamburgers and hot dogs up to all sorts of international options. Uh, we'd love to have you join us here, and uh, we can't wait to see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. 
I appreciate it. It looks beautiful. Uh, so next, right around the corner there, we've got the Boat Campers Sports Bar and Grill. And today we do have a special guest, uh, Kim Boat Camper, who I believe is on. We're going to see if he can put his camera on here. Um, but um, we've had a couple people mention, ah, oh, yes, hello. How are you, sir? Oh. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. And now what location are you at right now? I'm at, the, I'm, I'm at our Fort Lauderdale location right now. Okay, wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about your different locations that you have? Yes, so uh, we have on the, on the East Coast, we have a number of locations. We have uh, the Bow Camper Sports Bar and Grill that you see on the on the screen here. That's our Fort Lauderdale location. Uh, we have a location right by Jacaranda, not far from them, uh, in Plantation. That was our original store. That's been open for 11 years, going on 12 years. Hard to imagine that. Uh, we have another store in uh, in Miramar, close to Country Club in Miami, if you're golfing down that way. We also have two stores on the west coast of, uh, of Florida, one in Naples, right by Tiburon Golf Course, and and one up in Estero. So uh, we cover the whole state pretty well. We also have a place, uh, Bo's Beach, that's on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. So if you're out there playing golf and you're looking for a place to go afterwards, we can certainly accommodate uh, any amount of people. We're, we're able to seat, although, you know, in the pandemic, we're certainly doing everything we can to keep everybody safe and, and, and keep the cleanliness the way it's supposed to be in each and every one of our restaurants so that we can keep our customers safe. Um, but we have the ability to, you know, if you've got three foursomes, we can fit you in there on a, on a table. We can make a lot of different configurations. And, and we do cater to golf uh, to, to golf people because we're located close to a lot of different golf courses. And uh, so we're used to having guys come in and bring their scorecards, kind of pay their bills, if you will, so to speak, and then uh, and then have a few a uh, few beers and, and something to drink. So, uh, you know, plenty of plenty of chance to, to watch golf here and, and other sports and in this location, we've got over 160 televisions. Uh, I think all—I think our least amount of televisions we have in any one of our stores is probably 80, and that's probably in our plantation store. So you're never going to miss out on anything, whether it's a football game, baseball game, MMA, boxing, uh, golf—you you name it. Uh, we've got it all. So uh, uh, as as we know, I, I'm a golfer, and you know most golfers are, are are fans of multiple sports. So we certainly try to give you the opportunity. Uh, to, to see what you want. And more importantly, uh, we, I think we offer a menu that's uh, value oriented, uh, that's uh, that's good. We've got uh, in our Oakland Park restaurant, uh, for example. We have, I think, one of the finest sushi bars in all of South Florida, hard to believe, in a sports bar, but that's what we've been able to create there. And in our other locations, we've got a, a very good menu, as I said, very value oriented, uh, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of stuff for whether you're a vegan, uh, whether you're uh, uh, gluten free, whatever you're looking for. Uh, we can accommodate you with that. And we can accommodate big parties, small parties, and uh, just about uh, anything you need to do. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And uh, I know that you are known for the best game in town. It certainly is a fabulous place to go to watch any sporting event or go after golfing for sure. Thank you so much, Kim. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Look forward to seeing you guys here at Bow Campers one day. Absolutely. And folks, remember, they've got um, three different locations in uh, the greater Fort Lauderdale area, plus their two new restaurants, um, Bo's and Fort Lauderdale Beach, and then the balcony down um, on Las Olas as well. Uh, so we're going to take a, a little break here, and Gabe is going to put up our next poll here. So we're talking about um, golf today. So let's see. I, I would assume that if you are on here um, talking, you know, learning a little bit more about golf travel, you want to see is that because you are you're hearing you know getting a little bit more of an increase in demand for golf travel i know that i've had a couple of appointments with different travel advisors myself and and we're getting lots of questions about it so uh so tell us your thoughts is this what's going on um are you getting it somewhat no maybe in the future so definitely we're seeing a little bit actually not really so maybe that's just not so much a demand for yet for you, somewhat. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna move on next um, and we are going to bring up our next partner, which is up the road in Pompano Beach. So we've got Marissa, who is um, live at the Residence in Oceanfront down at, up in Pompano Beach. So Marissa, can you turn on your camera? And hi, Marissa, how are you? Hi, hi, Caitlin. Hello, everyone. 
Or is it still raining over there? It is still pouring rain here and very windy. It is. What a day, right? It's it's we've gotten some incremental weather, but it still looks like a fabulous place to be. I love that. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera off and take it away, Marissa. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Caitlin, for having us uh, today and for organizing this one a, a great presentation, an opportunity to present the Marriott um, Residence in on Pompano Beach Ocean Friends. As you can see, the building is right on the ocean, and the Pompano Beach is very wide, so you have a plenty of space to plan a beautiful wedding on the beach. Uh, our hotel has 100 uh, six rooms in all suites from Studio King um, with one large balcony and also with or a two queen bed. All of our rooms has um, a washer and dryer, a full kitchen, so you can basically come and stay with us. And if you decided not to leave, feel free to stay longer. Um, we also have a fitness room. Uh, due to social uh, distancing, of course, we have it come. Um, temporarily closed, but you have all the equipment that you need to, to exercise. Um, the great thing about our property is not only the large room with a minimum 500 square feet, um, the smallest room, we also do not charge a facility or uh, resort fee. Uh, most of the hotels do charge uh, resort fees, but we do not charge resort fees. We give you a full access to American breakfast, and also Wi-Fi internet connections. So you don't have to worry about additional charges on your room. Uh, we also have an in-room, um, we have a hotel dining, a uh, stand bar. We're actually updating our, our restaurant and uh, um, the food. We're bringing a New York uh, chef that we have in New York City to, to come over and enhance our food and beverage product. Um, and we also have a sister hotel. We have a two properties in Pompano. One is um, it's the, the San Cabo Resort and Marina. The hotel is actually on the marina. So you have an option if you get bored with, a, with the beach, you can also come in and stay with um, or, or visit us at the San Cabo Resort and Marina. Um, and today we are um, doing a raffle drawing uh, who can give us the the, the answer to the question, the name of our sister hotel, um, and you will have a, a complimentary one night stay at the Marriott Residence Inn with free access to the beach and also have a dinner, a complimentary dinner on site. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you so much, Marissa. I appreciate it. It looks so gorgeous. I've been as well to the Residence Inn um, up in Pompano Beach Oceanfront fabulous place to be. I actually had some friends that were visiting uh, in town from the DC area and they chose to stay at that beautiful property. So uh, that wide beach, great location. And they are close to our next uh, guest. We have Lydia with the city of Pompano Beach and Brian Campbell. They are live um, on destination over at the Pompano Beach Golf Course. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hi, Caitlin. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. You, Although you look, I don't know, it's a little suspicious. You got a jacket on. It looks like well, you're not uh, in Pompano Beach, but are you? Oh, oh, we're in Pompano Beach, unfortunately. We, we were planning on doing this outside, but unfortunately, uh, Mother Nature does not cooperate. We, uh, we do kiddingly say that Pompano Beach has a bubble around it, and normally when there's thunderstorms and rain all around the local area, we always kind of miss most of that, but uh, today we didn't. So, it's all right. Uh, yeah, no, we are. We're, we're, let me give a little bit background of the club. We've been here since the mid fifties, and uh, we're approximately a mile to the uh, ocean. Uh, so it's about a four or five minute commute from any of the beach hotels and A one A over to the golf course. We feature thirty six holes of golf. Uh, one golf course is a Greg Norman Pines Golf Course. Uh, the Norman Design Group uh, redesigned the golf course a few years ago. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've replaced the greens. Uh, we replaced the putting greens last year, and we replaced the putting greens on the second golf course, which is called the Palms. Uh, so we have 36 holes. The Pines golf course is a uh, par 72, uh, 7,300 yards in length. The uh, Palms golf course is a par 71, a little bit unique, and it's roughly 7,000 yards. Uh, we feature a full practice facility. We, we have uh, uh, 
turf tee as well as mats. Uh, so though from time to time we'll be on the mats, but 90% of the time we're out on the turf. So if folks want to practice some golf, they can hit golf balls right off the grass. We have a full short game area and two practice putting greens. Uh, we have a full complement uh, golf shop that we we, have, we offer over 40 sets of rental clubs, golf balls, tees, gloves, shorts, sweaters, shoes, socks, anything that anyone would need to, to uh, su support their game of golf for the day, we can help them with that. Uh, and from a food and beverage perspective, we have a very large partnership with uh, Gallupis. They handle all of our food and beverage. They have uh, enormous outside capacity. Uh, they actually have one of the few or only uh, brand new bandstands that they constructed in the last year. So it's a, a very large operation. We can uh, handle groups of 144 to, to 200. Unfortunately, with the uh, times that we live in now, we are limited quite a bit to what we can do, uh, which leads me into our next one. Uh, all of our players have single single rock cart riders. Uh, all the golf carts are disinfected and, and cleansed, disinfected every round. So no one, no one has to be exposed to any uh, any of the, the COVID issues. We have a we have a very, the very large ability to space everyone out. Uh, one of the really nice things about the golf courses is that there are no homes on any of the golf courses. It's kind of like uh, going for a walk in the woods. So once you tee off, once you tee off, uh, you kind of go out and you're one with nature for a while. Uh, our rate structures, our one golf course, uh, the Pines Golf Course, they're both very affordable. Uh, we have specials throughout the day. Obviously, usually around midday, we have a, a rate change. So we, if folks want to go out and take a walk on the beach in the morning and, and play around the golf in the afternoon, we can accommodate that or vice versa. Um, but other than that, that's about all. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I know, it looks like maybe you did have, I saw a golf cart going right by you earlier too. So you got a little bit of action going on. We've got a few players out there. Not a lot, but a few. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so, Thanks, you know, they did, uh, absolutely, Brian, anytime. So we did mention that they have a restaurant there, Guppies, I believe he was calling it. Um, and of course, there's some food and beverage over where uh, Marissa was at uh, the Sands Harbor or at the residence in Pompano Beach. Um, but we also uh, today want to let you know of a new restaurant that just opened in the Pompano Beach area that is great for uh, for sports clients and golfers and really anybody. Um, they just opened during the pandemic, uh, was part of the whole opening of the Pompano Beach area where that pier is on this the picture right there in the center of your screen. Um, but Lucky Fish, their tagline, sip, see, and sigh, perfect, uh, perfect tagline, I really like that. Um, but they just opened, like I said, during the pandemic, and um, they're an outdoor restaurant, an outdoor venue. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., so great for lunch, drinks, dinner. Uh, they feature lots of uh, jumbo wings and sammies, they call them, for, for some sandwiches, and their smash burgers look delicious as well. Uh, but definitely check them out after the golf course um, and right by that beautiful Pompano Beach Pier. It's the place to be. They are certainly a busy place because they are all outdoors, as I mentioned. Um, and, you know, that is going to conclude our portion of our partners here. And just a few things before we go to question and answers and the prizes today. Um, but we do want to mention our Travel Agent Academy. If you have not um, taken the course yet before, we do encourage you to become a certified Sunny Specialist um, by taking our academy. As Tracy mentioned at um, the beginning of the webinar, we do have our brand new uh, Shaping the Recovery video on our academy there. So we encourage you to listen to that video and uh, take our Travel Agent Academy course. Um, you will also get access to our private Facebook group that I mentioned that we run and we put lots of great information on there um, for um, upcoming specials if we go and take a site visit and things like that. So you can find access through um, access to the Travel Agent Academy on our website, sunny.org slash we love agents. That will bring you right there. And on the same page, you are going to uh, find our Junior Ambassador Program, or otherwise known as Learn Where You Live Program. Now, we created this, uh, this program back uh, in April, uh, March and April, when everybody was going to be quarantined and all the kids were going to be sent home to, to homeschool. So we wanted to uh, create a way to 
nourish that love of learning and travel from a young age. Uh, so we created these lessons for elementary and middle school age children, all focusing on specific topics like environment, um, history. We even have sports development, sports, I think we call it sports business development um, course on there, history, civics. Uh, but it's a great way to engage with children and learn something new about our destination. Um, and they can get fun badges, a certificate in the mail, and, and prizes and things like that. So we all know that children can certainly influence some travel decisions. So get them involved at a young age and, and find something fun to offer them online for, for some of those um, online learning. And then as we all continue, uh, you know, maybe working from home and, and doing uh, more of a virtual life, want to just make sure that you know we do have our final episode of season two coming up. Uh, we did have a change in date. It is going to be November 17th. And the next episode will be focusing on ultra lux travel. Uh, so this one really is going to be special. Think about, I don't know, helicopters, Lamborghinis, private yachts, things like that. Uh, so more to come on that. And you can register online on the sunny.org slash we love agents. Um, also in the follow up email that you will receive, there will be a link as well. So you can register for that. And then we have a special features coming that we just added before we start season three in January. But we are going to be focusing on boutique properties and um, those extended stay kind of unique properties that maybe you haven't heard of because they're not associated with a brand. Um, but definitely tune in on December 9th when we will be uh, focusing, we'll be zooming in live with some of those boutique properties. And uh, just another shout out there to to follow us on Leisure Lauderdale. So this is not our consumer facing page. Our consumer facing page on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube is Visit Lauderdale. So you can find those um, if you need to share some beautiful photography and, and information to share with your clients, you can find that on Visit, Visit Lauderdale. But you can also follow us, that's uh, Tracy, Gabe and myself, we have created these Leisure Lauderdale Instagram and Facebook pages um, for you to interact with you and the travel trade business so that you can know about upcoming webinars or if we visit hotels and want to get you know, some insight into those as well. So follow along and you can um, on Instagram and Facebook. So at Leisure Lauderdale is where you'll find that. And I think we are doing well with time. We've got about 10 minutes and uh, we probably have some questions out there. And um, I'm gonna see if Gabe can read off maybe some questions. And if not, we have some amazing prizes that we're gonna talk about here that our partners have offered up. What do we got, Gabe? Do we have any questions? Oh, Gabe, you're still on mute. That's... Listen, that helps, there we go. Uh, here we go. There's quite should a few, we, there's a... Should we bring our partners back on camera yes. too? Mm -hmm. So um, we've got Renaissance, if you're still here, Marissa, the residents, or Elizabeth, Brian, maybe. So we have Casey. a question for the um, for the our um, golf courses. It says, "Can anyone honor course hop packages?" Hmm. Course hop packages. Mm hmm. Course hop packages. I'm not familiar with course Okay, I, I'm not either because I'm not a golfer. So let's move on to the next one. Wait, does Mike know? Maybe does Mike? No. Okay. okay. So, so that's something guess, we can look so into. <laughs> the answer to that is no. So I mean, I'm assuming if you want to either play a different golf course when you're in the area, um, mm -hmm. we can only refer to you to some. We have two courses here, so that's kind of an, a big advantage to Jack Miranda those those championship courses. Um, but we don't have any. I'm not sure that's what you're referring to, but we don't have any packages set up with other courses um, in the area. Okay, no problem. And a uh, question for the um, hotels. Um, do you have kids clubs or kids activities while the adults are doing a round of nine or 18 or perhaps more? Uh, for Marriott, we have the beach and the swimming pool. But but the kids have to be accompanied by an adult, correct? Correct, has to be. Okay. At Renaissance Plantation, same thing. A kids club on the beach in Pompano. 
that you can register your kids for. Okay, there we go. A privately operated by a certified um, group. So that is Lydia, right, from Pompano Beach. Can you can you repeat the name of that uh, kids club, Lydia? Um, I'll have to get that to you because it just slipped my mind. But there is definitely a beach club for children, and you can sign them in in the morning and pick them up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that the Funky Fish? Uh, funky Fish, yes, it is. Thank there you, Caitlin. Go. Two minds are better than one. We highlighted them on our family travel webinar. That's right. If you... Um, happen to join us there. Um, there was a question, um, and, and the person uh, answered themselves, but just in case, there was a question about uh, what Elizabeth said in her email. It is in the handout, correct, Elizabeth? It's in the handout that you can download right now. It is, yeah, and I'm sorry I cut out. I started seeing it flash. I was like, oh no, I'm leaving. So um, yeah, the handout that I have that's on the attachments to the right in that uh, kind of dashboard there, my email is in there. It's eburnett at whitelodging.com. So yes, email me um, any questions that you have, uh, your top three favorite features of the hotel by the end of uh, this Friday, but then also look at that handout for that $3 per room night promotion too. Great. Um, quickly, awesome. a couple more questions. We have a question about... Um, uh, accessibility for people who have mobility difficulties at the hotels and at the golf courses, wheelchairs or uh, people who have other assistance. Hmm. Anybody want to? Yes, the, uh, the Marriott is accessible and um, for disability from from indoor and outdoor. Okay. Although we, we here at the Renaissance, um, we are definitely um, accessible friendly. So our ratio of amount of um, accessible rooms to regular rooms is higher than most hotels and uh, certainly higher than what's required. And then with the renovation that we just went through as well, we even expanded on, you know, doorway widths and, um, you know, those different features, uh, the bar, checking in, all of that. So, yes, we are very accessible friendly. Mm, okay. Um, inside and out. Um, if you have any kind of disability and you're on the golf course, we'll put like a handicap flag. You can drive to where not everybody can. You know, everybody can drive. We drive a little bit closer to the hole. And then, of course, coming in and out of the buildings, we're all ADA accessible and compliant. And throughout. Okay. Awesome. I I think uh, the last question I'll do is might be for Mike. Mike, we have a question here. What when is shoulder season for golfing in greater Fort Lauderdale? I, well, I personally, I would say that, that greater Fort Lauderdale is great because I can play golf year round, but I might, I might defer to our, our golf course friends. I, you know, summer is probably a tougher time for, for golf just because it's so warm, but I, I, I look at it as a year round place. Can you refer to the shoulder season as November? Well, probably right around Christmas. Peak season starts the day after Christmas through the end of March. And then the month of April is our other solar. All right, yeah. great. Okay, All right, so are we on to the good part? The that's fun right. Part? That's right. I had to stop sharing my screen so I can uh, look up the questions that we uh Do you want uh, me had. to do you want to read them or you want me to did you find them? I, I have them, but um, so the the way this is going to work, folks, is that you have to type your answer in the question box, and we have a lot of prizes, but you can only win one prize today. One one prize, right, Caitlin? One prize per uh, webinar, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. All right. I know some of you like to, you know, are really quick with those typing, but. If you win the first time, then you can still and, answer, and, and, but you just might and, not and win. And we know you're paying attention. We know you are. So uh, good, <laughs> good, good on you. Okay. Uh, first question, uh, first prize is uh, from Jacaranda Golf Course. Um, and it is a round of golf for four. Uh, and the question is this. Everybody ready? How many rental sets do they have on property? How many rental sets? Do they have on property? It's a tough one. I know they called it out. They said it right. Oh, we got a we got a right answer. 
All righty. Awesome. Congratulations, David. You did get it. 65, right, uh, Jack around the team? Yep. Yeah, they Congratulations, were. Congratulations, David, David. was listening. The winner. Okay, next. Bear with me for just a second. And the next, um, the next question is Renaissance from Renaissance Plantation. Um, sorry. So the Renaissance Plantation is that what you already described, Elizabeth? The yes. The raffle from the email. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you can you run through that again so that everybody understands what you're offering and how to win it? Yes. So how you win is email me um, by close of business this Friday your three favorite features of our hotel. And I'm not quite sure how many you saw, but um, feel free to look us up. I know I've already received a couple of emails um, with people. So that's really awesome. Um, but yes, there will be a random raffle for uh, sending me your top three favorite features of the hotel. Awesome. Very fun. And that the prize for that is um, a two night stay in our suite. Uh, with a $70 food and beverage credit and a round of golf for two at Jacaranda across the street from us. Yay. Oh, wow. Excellent. So the next, uh, the next prize is from the Pompano Beach Golf Course. And here's the question. How many golf courses do we have in Pompano Beach? Yay. That was quick. <laughs> Deborah. We've got Deborah Reinhardt. Congratulations. That's right. She got it right. The answer is two. We have two, yeah. the Palm and the Pines. And then last but not least, uh, Marissa, do you want to um, explain again um, what you're doing with your, uh, with your giveaway? <laughs> um, well, I'm offering a one night stay at the Marriott Residence Inn and a dinner for two, or if you have kids, feel free to bring them, at the Sands Harbor Resort Patio Restaurant. Good stuff. All right, and your question is? Let's see, Gabe, do you have the question handy? So, yes, the question was, uh, what's your sister's property pr uh, property's name? Is that right? Correct. All right, that was, I think that was too easy, Marissa. There we go, we got. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of answers. They were all listening to you. I'm sorry. I'm all right. We've got Kim. Kim Height. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing your last name incorrectly, but congratulations, Kim. You are the winner there. Awesome. And then, Gabe, we do have one more, um, but this is going to be a really kind of a trick question. We're going to see if anybody knows, because I don't think he mentioned it. Should we change it again? The question? Yeah, we should. Okay. So we're going to do this. How many, this is for, let's see, what is Bo Campers offering? They gave us a gift 58. certificate mm -hmm. for $58. So the question is going to be, how many Bo Campers sports bar and grills are there in greater Fort Lauderdale? Let's see if they were listening and if you can see. Oh, I keep on losing the question box. Gabe, can you let me see, where do my questions go? All right. I see it, but I'm doing the math and I'm doing the geography. <laughs> let's see. All right, hold on. Let's see. And do we have a winner there? I my little questions thing went away. I got where did they go? I can't read it. All right. So we've got a Gabe. Can you let me see here? Hold on. Gabe. Yes. Check your phone here. Um, uh -huh. let's see because I do not have access to it. Today is a day of technical difficulties. So let's see. Oh, here we go. It came back. Okay. Yeah, we do have a, we do have a winner. Yay. And that is uh, Brian Watts, Watson. So he got Brian, it. Brian, he loves to he, listen to our webinars. He awesome. got it right. I, yeah, so there are three bow campers, although it's kind of a trick question because they have a couple other ones in South Florida, but in right. Greater Fort Lauderdale, there's just three. So that's in Miramar, Fort Lauderdale, and next to Jacaranda and Plantation. So congratulations. And if anybody's wondering why the $58, this is an extra one. Why do you think 50? Because that's a random thing, right? $58? Anybody? I, I think Jacaranda's laughing. Does, do you know Jacaranda? Come on, Casey, you know, right? 
All right, somebody else got it. He does. He does it. Was it Kim's football number? It was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So Kim's football jersey number. Yep. Awesome. So that is right. it for the prizes. And um, thank you all so much. We really appreciate you joining us today and uh, heading through some of those technical difficulties we had today with this lousy weather and uh, things like that. But overall, I hope you all learned a little bit more about golfing in Greater Fort Lauderdale and uh, some of these beautiful hotel properties and uh, restaurants to come and visit and, and golf as well. Um, we are going to be sending you a follow-up email that will have the recording if you need to um, share it, view it again, or share it with somebody else that works in your office perhaps, um, and as well as the link to attend our next webinar. And it will have the information for the emails for the two um, hotel properties if you need to reach out to them as well. So thank you so much, Tracy. I know that uh, you were having some audio difficulties. She usually does our little closing here, but uh, she's waving off to us. Thank you all so much. That is the conclusion of our golf webinar here in Greater Fort Lauderdale. We appreciate your time. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.